Toyota's Land Cruiser is a dead set bush legend. Now the 200 series has been around for more than a decade. It's your only option to climb into a brand new cruiser unless you can wait two years to climb into the 300 series. Toyota reckons this is king off the road. We're here to test those claims. For even more details on the 200 series, make sure you read my review at carsguide.com.au. And if you're watching this on YouTube, hit like and subscribe, and that way you'll be able to stay up to date with all of our news and reviews. This is the VX, second from top in a full variant range. It has a 4.5 litre turbo diesel V8 engine, six speed automatic transmission, full time four wheel drive with dual range gearing, a limited slip centre diff, and it's also got a whole bunch of driver assist tech specifically for off roading, but we'll get into that later. From the outside, the 200 is a big imposing unit. It's a basic blocky large SUV. Looks a bit like a family friendly war machine. So what's not to like? It has a horizontal split tailgate, side steps, 18 inch alloy wheels, daytime running lights and more. Inside it's a cavernous space with over three rows of seats and back to the rear cargo area. It's a well appointed interior, fit and finish is very impressive, but it also has a real practical feel about it. It's functional and it's comfortable. As for room and comfort inside, the 200 series really sets the bar high. All seats are comfortable and supportive and they're easy to spend long hours in. Even the rear seats, there's only two of them back there, offer more than adequate levels of comfort. Though if you're an adult, you won't want to be caught in there for too long. So it's plush and spacious, but what's the 200 series like to drive off-road? Well, on gravel, it drives supremely well. Steering remains pretty sharp on loose, uneven surfaces, with a nice turn in weight about it, and despite its bulk, the 200 is easy to manoeuvre. It sits nice and solid on the track, and even deep corrugations and surprise potholes barely rattle it. The coil spring suspension yields a spongy, comfortable ride, but the 200 series never feels like you're driving a couch down the track, no matter how big and ponderous it looks. The cruiser's KDSS suspension, which varies sway bar tension to suit the terrain, is standard. The 200 series, is a cool customer on gravel tracks, but it feels even more at home in the bush. Low speed four wheel driving requires a special balance of old school mechanicals and high tech driver assist aids. And the cruiser strikes a pretty good balance between the two. Its multi-terrain select system has five settings, mud and sand, loose rock, mogul, rock and dirt, and rock, with each designed to adjust throttle input, gear changes, and shift times to suit the terrain. It's certainly effective, and it's an added weapon in the cruiser's off-road arsenal, but it's a bit fiddly to operate. Turn Assist applies the brakes to your inside rear wheel to help reduce your turning circle, and that comes in pretty handy on tight bush tracks. The multi-terrain monitor uses cameras mounted on the cruiser's exterior to show the driver obstacles you might not otherwise be able to see. Sure, it's effective, but for me, nothing beats sticking your head out the window, or even better, actually getting out of the vehicle and walking a track or water crossing before you drive it. I also found it difficult to engage it. The Cruiser has 225 millimeters of ground clearance and a wading depth of 700 millimeters, so it was never troubled through these deep mud holes or wheel ruts. It has decent wheel travel, but its KDSS system also helps deliver even more suspension flex as you go through any ruts. The steep hill climb is a proper obstacle for any off-roader, so it's a top spot to test the 200's crawl control. I'm just going to have a, a test run. This system is aimed at maintaining a constant low speed by automatically controlling engine power and brakes. <laughs> well, I won't be getting up that anytime soon. Look, every vehicle has its limits. We just tried a, a really serious hill, um, pretty damn steep. We tried to get up it, we couldn't. Really loose gravel. We failed that one. This is pretty close uh, in terms of, of sort of gradient, at least in the initial bit. Um, so we're gonna do this and we'll show you how comfortably uh, all the tech works um, all, all together, low range gearing. Um, so yeah, let's give it a nudge.
This is a pretty decent hill though, pretty slippery. In this instance, it's not a problem at all. You can hear that crawl control biting right now. It's, it's, it's pretty aggressive in its delivery, but it's, uh, it's, it's very effective. The 200 has plenty of driver assist tech, including blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, and that multi-terrain monitor. It's also got 10 airbags and it has a five-star ANCAP rating. Fuel consumption is listed as 9.5 litres per 100 kilometres, and that's on a combined cycle. The 200 series is such a good tower, we used it as the control vehicle on our recent Tesla Model X tow test. It has a 750 kilogram unbraked towing capacity and 3,500 kilogram braked towing capacity. A five years unlimited kilometre warranty applies to this wagon. The 200 series makes a great platform for an off-road tour. It's big, roomy, it's a capable four-wheel drive and the bonus is there are lots of accessories available. It handles everything with ease, but it's never going to be as dynamic or as lively as some of its rivals. It's also heavy, and it's also pretty expensive. But if you're willing to forgive it for those things, then it might just be your perfect off-road tourer. For my money, the lower spec GX or GXL might be an even better bet as an off-road tourer. If you can do without the thrills, you save a fair wedge of cash. Now, as always, you may disagree with me, and that's fine. Have your say in the comments section below.